Okay, one of the things that people complain to me about a lot is that we find it very hard to write discussion and conclusion. Is this correct? Sometimes it happens that uh, we find it in writing discussion. Okay. Also, I notice that people write the discussion very long. And they spend a lot of time on the discussion. My advice is to spend that time on writing the abstract and make your discussion very short. And the discussion should be structured. So my suggestion is that because the discussion is mainly about understanding how the results will help in caring for patients, this information goes in the discussion, we should focus on very quickly telling the people whether our results are valid and this can be done by constructing the discussion into these subheadings we write the main findings we write the strengths and weaknesses once we know the main finding and strength and weaknesses we know whether the results are valid and we can say what our results are by taking the text from the abstract and putting that into the main findings of the discussion and what we can do is in the abstract our results section has numbers we can remove those numbers and then only the words sentences and paragraphs can describe the main findings so i'll give you an example here is a paper the title of the paper this is the result section of this paper as written in the abstract so it says that there are 75 articles of which 51 have the null hypothesis etc prospectively registered for the discussion we can say the same thing 51 of 75 instead of saying this number with 68 percent and confidence interval we can simply say two-thirds of the papers were prospectively registered. So you can see how we have converted numbers into words which can go into the main findings paragraph of the discussion section. Here I highlight this point again. Numbers can be easily converted into words from abstract into discussion. Another example, in this case, 61% of the prospectively registered papers had a particular feature. And we can simply say this information by saying over half of the papers did not meet the target sample size here. I hope this point is clear that numbers from abstract should be converted into words to write the first paragraph of the discussion. Please do not make any claims that your work is original or the first report, because typically, if you say that it is the first report, it is because you have not done a search properly. Okay, then the conclusion part of the discussion can also be based on the conclusion part of the abstract. So in this paper, here is the conclusion. Women participating in trials experience better outcomes. We can use the same text and add a few more sentences explaining the same feature with a bit more description, and that becomes your conclusion of the discussion. So now we have written the main findings and the conclusion of the discussion. We now have only three more paragraphs to write strengths and weaknesses, comparison with previous studies, and implications of the findings. Remember, in the introduction, we wrote what were the weaknesses of the previous studies. We use the same references and we write these references in the third paragraph of the discussion to compare our main finding with the findings of the previous studies. And then we have 
our third paragraph of the discussion. We now are left with only two paragraphs to write. The strengths and weaknesses for writing this paragraph, remember, statistics is not the main thing. The main thing is whether you use randomization, whether the outcome was complete, whether you use multivariable model. So your methods described here as strengths and weaknesses are the key part of the second paragraph of your discussion. So I show you an example. In this flow diagram that we discussed, how a study is constructed, you can have selection bias, which applies in the beginning of the figure. You can have performance bias, which applies in the middle of the figure, or you can have measurement bias, which applies in the end of the figure. And these are the features that you can cover in writing your second paragraph of the discussion, whether or not there was concealment, blinding, and completeness of follow-up. And here are some other words to describe the same concept. And with these concepts, referring back to your figure, describing your study and your data, it is possible for you to write about 10 to 20 lines concerning strengths and weaknesses of your paper. I'll give you an example of how to write limitation. The important thing is to write your limitation with a positive ending. So here is a text from one of my students who, write, who, who wrote the first draft saying, our study has some limitations, most of them related to the subjective nature of the topic we were addressing. So in this sentence, you can see that we are saying for our paper that we have limitations and the nature is subjective. This conveys a negative impression to the reader or the editor. You can convert this into a positive feature by saying that these subjective nature of the topic is a perceived limitation, not a real limitation. And that This perceived limitation, you have tackled it by using strong methods, by using duplicate data extraction, so that two people were looking at the same piece of information in order to avoid subjectivity. So here you can see that we have highlighted the limitation, but have referred to our methods to state that we have dealt with the limitation. So that's a positive ending. Another example, we are stating that there was no instrument available and this was a complex process. We can also convert this to a positive finding. As stated here. Is there, is there a question or a comment? No, sir, you can continue. Okay, thank you. So with this uh, background, I have now highlighted how you can write the main findings, conclusion, comparison with other studies and strengths and weaknesses from using the information you already have. The final is the meaning of the findings or the interpretation of the findings. And this tells you whether the findings are useful for patients. Writing this is fairly complex, and I simply highlight that you should consider re-emphasizing the strength of your paper and re-emphasize the comparison of your findings. And then with that, you can use the results, the conclusion. And with this, you have all the different five paragraphs written for your discussion section. 